As anyone who's ever stepped outside on a hot summer day knows, the air can take some time to heat up. The same is true for the atmosphere as a whole. Though the summer solstice hits on the longest day of the year, it's not necessarily the hottest. That's because it takes time for the atmosphere to absorb the sun's energy and then convert it into heat. Similarly, midday is not necessarily the hottest time of the day, is it? That's because it takes some time for the sun's rays to travel through the atmosphere and reach the ground. The same principle applies to the summer solstice. It can take some time for the atmosphere to heat up, even though the sun is at its highest point in the sky. It always sticks in my mind as an HVAC technician, but I'm reminded of it when KCRA weatherman Mark Finan talks about it every summer. In an article on the channel's uh, weather blog, he said, June is the month with the highest sun angle and the longest hour of the day. By the time we get to the solstice, June 20th of this year, we have 14 hours and 51 minutes of daylight. By August, we're seeing shorter days and a lower sun angle. By mid-August, we've lost about an hour and a half of daylight. And despite the shorter days, August is a hotter month than June. The average high on June 1st is 85. On August 1st, it's 94. June averages four days in the hundreds here in Sacramento, while August has six. So why? It's called the lag of seasons. As we transition from spring to summer, the sun gradually warms the surface of the earth. So the hottest part of the year is roughly a month after the solstice. And the opposite is true in the wintertime when you'll find that the coldest part of the season is often in January, which is a month or so after the winter solstice. The winter cools the earth's surface so less radiant heat is absorbed and retained in the atmosphere. What I gather from this is that even though the sun is at the same angle in the sky in June as it is in August, or May as it is in September, the Earth's surface is cooler in the earlier summer months than it is later in the summer. The winter cools the Earth's surface, so less radiant heat is absorbed and retained in the atmosphere. Like I was saying, we, we notice this same phenomenon during the day as noon is not the hottest part of the day. That always falls around 4 or 5 p.m., that's the atmosphere heating up and trying to put on the brakes as night comes. It just takes a little longer to reject the day's heat, which is why it can still be 90 degrees outside at bedtime. So anyways, this is just a topic that I wanted to mention before during the summer, but I found it hard to explain on paper. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating and Air. Don't forget to subscribe. And check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.